Previously on The Silver Lining. We defied fate with the vain requests of human desires. Too late we realized that the answers to what we sought had been in our own hearts all along. And we were punished. Punished with an endless war that had just begun. Do you know anyone who might know what this magic is? The Oracle of the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. Her knowledge is greater than the ocean, but very few people are ever allowed to see her. His identity I cannot see, for he is shrouded in darkness. I can only say that your fate has bound you to this evil man. He is greater than any foe you have yet faced. Seek he who rules the Isle of the Mists. He shall be waiting. Your children are under a dark spell. The only way to revert such a spell is by reaching their minds. There is an ancient druid spell that will grant you entrance into their dreams. If you bring the ingredients of the spell to me, I can create it for you. The Arch Druid has sent for you! He said this is not a natural storm! They said that only after a thousand years would a last chance be granted. One final choice would be made that could fill the fields with light or darker than the shadows. The thousand years have passed. The time of choosing is now. Wisdom in them at times is overwhelming. Good day, Archdruid. They have been here since before our time, and will remain ever after. I wish I too could be enlightened by their wisdom. Much of what they would teach you, you may already know. Yet I don't have all the answers, especially the ones I'm seeking. And what is it that you seek? I haven't managed to find a way to stop evil from reaching my family. You surely understand we cannot live in a world without evil. All things must exist in a perfect balance. Such perfection makes some innocents suffer. It does us no good to question Mother Nature and her actions. We cannot change those. We can only accept them. Had you not faced the evils you have, you may feel differently. You are a good and strong king because you have seen the face of evil. There are simpler paths to becoming a good king. The simpler paths may look that way in the beginning, 
but the path you have chosen has left you better prepared for what you now face. You should not have any regret for your choices. I will be back soon. Keep your senses alert. This weather was not caused by Mother Nature. I will. Goodbye for now. The Archdruid told me that the scroll is enchanted with the wisdom of Mother Nature and will guide me through my journey. I should heed its directions. The scroll is enchanted to let me know what ingredients are currently available. It looks like only these three are available right now. I have obtained an ingredient. It will be crossed off the list. The magic of the scroll will direct me to the islands on the map where I can find the currently displayed ingredients. I'll keep it in my pocket until I need it again. Finally, the Archdruid told me that the scroll has the ability to point me towards people or events that will also aid me on my quest. Speaking of which, isn't that Shamir the genie? A magical bag, an animated vessel, a lethal liquid. The boy is trying his luck fishing off the edge of the dock. However, he doesn't seem to have caught anything yet. Looking at the boy reminds Graham of his own experiences fishing in the lakes of Daventry as a child. Please respect the personal space of others, Graham. Hello there, lad. Have you had any luck catching fish today? all got into hiding because of that storm last night. Ma was really scared. I've been trying to catch something for lunch, but there's no bites. I'm getting hungry. The boy is trying to concentrate. Better to leave him alone. Graham is amazed at the fine craftsmanship of this fairy. Shamir the genie must have had extra help renovating this boat to have it come out looking like this. Good day, Hassan. Good day indeed. After that thing that looked like the start of the apocalypse last night, any day seems like a good day. Ready to sail? You have a pretty island here. The view is incredible. What can any man say about the place he was born? I'm glad to live and breathe on this isle, as hard as times may be sometimes. It's less crazy than the Isle of Wonder. More civilized than the Isle of the Beast. More down to earth than the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. And certainly more solid than the newly discovered Isle of Mist and any other rocks that might be hiding out there near the boundaries of the world. This little place is the best spot for anyone to live, native to the archipelago, 
or otherwise. Home is always the most beautiful place, Captain. It was even the safest spot to be during those hard times we were having shortly before King Alexander arrived. He was darned lucky to have washed up on this very isle all right. The works of destiny, my friend. The works of destiny. Who knows what might have happened to him otherwise. Alhazred might have found out and snuffed him out like a candle. The twisted toad. Fifteen years with that scheming warthog inside the castle walls. Why didn't someone realize the truth sooner? Sometimes we have to realize what we are about to lose in order to know how precious it is to us. Yes, and I'm more grateful to your son than I can express in words, Graham. We all are. You must know all about the village. I mean, being born here and all. You betcha. It's not that big, but we've got everything a village needs. A baker, a weaver, a metal worker, a doomsayer. Uh, what? Just pulling your leg. But we do have our share of eccentrics, which we tolerate all the time. Well, most of the time, anyway. But this being the best, as well as the safest isle, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Where do most of the people live? Mostly on the outskirts. Not many of them live in the actual village, unless they enjoy being kept up by late-night festivals and being woken up by peddlers bellowing out what they're selling before the sun's fully up in the morning. Seems like a fun place to live in. Ah, yes. Best place in the world, Graham. Best place in the world. Since you mentioned hidden places in these lands, that makes me wonder. The Archdruid told me to look for a magic bag that was lost in the sea. Do you have any ideas where I could find this? I may know these waters like the palm of my hand, but it's depths. That's another question. It'd be like finding a needle in a haystack if you catch my drift. Maybe if you had a better reference. I'd recommend asking Ali, the bookshop owner. That man knows about everything that goes on in these lands. I'll follow your advice. I've encountered many sailors during my adventures. I always wondered what it's like to live in the sea, being a land person myself. There's nothing like working on what you love. Feeling the air in your face as you sail across new areas. It's an amazing experience, Graham. Did you always want to be a sailor? All of my life. It runs in the family. My father trained me on how to sail this ferry, as did his father before him, and so on. I've yet to make enough money to support a family, since I've been out of the business for so long. It may be a while before I have a son to teach, but hopefully I will someday. I've got enough life ahead of me. I wish I could say the same for my son. What? My son, your king. He was kidnapped from us when he was only a few months old and became a slave to an evil sorcerer. He returned to us a short time before his 18th birthday. We've only really known him for a few years, and that's hardly enough time to teach a prince how to rule a kingdom. The things you learn. I wouldn't worry about him, though. He has good instincts. He asks the right questions, he gets the right answers. He was able to find a way off this island and navigate his way through all the others. He's done what no other princes I've known, even though I've known next to none, have been able to do. Bring the former king and queen back from the dead, uncover the evil plot of a seemingly innocent man, gain possession of a genie, and if you say he survived slavery under an evil sorcerer, then there's no doubt he's a smart fella. He's got the basics down, and I'm sure that his wife can help him in any area where he needs it. Still, as a father, I just can't stop worrying. Just like my own father. What's funny is that I never really learned until I went out there by myself. When you don't have someone to call to, and the storm is at your bow, you always find a way to manage, though. I can relate. My story's not too different from yours. I'm grateful my son met Kasima. She's a very brave woman. Yes, sir. That's what I always say. Don't let yourself be fooled by her delicate look. The girl has a brave soul. I sensed that in her when I first met her in Mordok's castle back when the wizard had enslaved her. She saved my life. Did she? So she didn't only help the king bring the vizier down, but she also helped you. She's full of surprises. 
Even as a little girl, I could tell that Cosima was going to be a fine ruler when she grew up. She loved the town and the townspeople. She would often go down to the bookstore to read Ali's latest arrivals. And, of course... She rode your ferry. Who's telling this story? Oh, go on, go on. I, I'll be quiet. Anyway, like you said, she loved to ride the ferry from isle to isle. That was, until that dog Alhazred's activities made the isle so dangerous that I had to stop ferrying passengers entirely. Cosima was so sad. She was almost a teenager then. Still, that didn't stop her from visiting the village whenever she could. The way she talked, you'd think she was one of the regular townspeople. And when she grew up and started spending more time at the castle, being trained to be a queen, it was heartbreaking for some of us. It was like losing a favorite daughter. When Alexander was taken, the kingdom fell into sorrow as well. I can't believe it's all happening again. Calm down, sire. Calm down. There's a clear day to follow every stormy night. Thank you for talking with me. Talking with you? That wasn't talking. I could go on for half an hour and still consider a conversation a chat. This was just a casual exchange of words. You come to me at night when you've got plenty of spare time to kill, and I'll show you some real talking. Uh, no thanks. Uh, like they say, silence is golden. Whatever you say, Graham. Come back when you're ready to sail. It's Jalo, the court jester of the royal family. He's enjoying his reading, or at least pretending to do so. Graham has no doubt the usual jolly fellow is just as worried about the situation of his king, and especially about Cosima, as anyone else. Good book? I don't know. I can't read. Well, what are you doing, then? Trying to look smart. Don't listen to him, your majesty. He can read. <laughs> Woo! Gullible. What's the book about? It has taught me the great properties of how to properly lend a proper hand. Say again? I've learned a lot. May I practice with you? Do you need a hand? Ah! By the... your... your hand! I... Oh, <laughs> I see. Uh, you're lending me a hand. All right. Ah, you can keep that one. I have many others. Have you any idea what this mysterious illness the twins are suffering from could be? My guess would be chronic boredom. Boredom? Jalo, they're comatose. Boredom is a very serious illness, King Graham. If I'd spent the last 20 years of my life in Daventry, I'd be comatose too. Laughter, as they say, is the best medicine, and those two need a hearty helping of it. If it were as easy as that. Unfortunately, I'm just a clown, King Graham. Not a miracle worker. Goodbye, my friend. No! Please don't go! What's wrong? Please don't abandon me! Cholo, quit it. <laughs> bye bye, Your Majesty. How fare are you today, bookkeeper? Very well, King Graham. For a small village, your bookshop is amazingly well stocked. You've quite a collection of literature here. Thank you, good sir. I take pride in offering fine books on many subjects to my customers. 
I am glad King Alexander was encouraging his subjects to read more. You may look at any book you like, King Graham. Perhaps the information may help you. Do you enjoy reading? I do, but my knowledge comes from life experiences. I see. There are some of us that stay and live in dreams, and others that make those dreams come true. One man's dream is another man's gold. Very true indeed. You must know my son well by now, good man. Why do you say so? If there's one thing that can be said about him, it's that he loves reading. Indeed. King Alexander spends hours here. He comes with Jollo from time to time, and they just sit and read. It's the kind of silence I enjoy. A little company's never bad. With so few people interested in reading, it does get lonely from time to time. I've learned to live with it by now, but your son's company is pleasant. Tell me, good man, what interested him most? Let me see. He often reads on the subject of magic. He was very interested in the occult. I had hoped his interest in that would have waned by now. He did live under that wizard's dominion for most of his life. But you'd think he'd hate it. He might be after a way to master it and make himself safe from what kept him a slave. He was also interested in history. He's read everything he can about the Green Isles, as well as other places. I gave him that advice. You can never know enough about the place you govern. And sometimes he would just pick up a poetry book and read it. Here's a secret. Sometimes he would copy one and take it to Cosima. How romantic as well. Very nice. He's a good man. I know. <laughs> He's very much like his mother. Let me do some research in your books. Be my guest. The unassuming counter serves its purpose for the old bookkeeper. Who needs a fireplace in this heat? Who needs a fireplace in this heat? The weary, lined face of Ali, the bookstore owner, smiles graciously as Graham looks his way. Ali looks very tired. He probably didn't sleep well last night because of the storm. Graham is generous, but not that generous. I'm searching for ingredients for a spell to bring my children back. A spell? This is druid magic, yes? Yes. Do you think it will work? The druids are very powerful creatures. Very little is known about their nature, but I can assure you their magic does work. I've read some interesting volumes and they speak of highly uncommon yet powerful magic. I realize this is not going to be an easy task. Do you have any idea where I could find any of these ingredients? The druids have their own language of sorts, which is difficult to understand even for an avid reader like myself. Many of these ingredients are very unusual, and some of them may be druidic names for common things. Parts even look encrypted. It's hard to say. Lost magic bag. I just read a book on treasures from the sea, and I did come across references to such a thing. Where can I find it? Bring me a map of the lands, and I shall point it to you. I must warn you, though, it's where the nymphs gather. And these creatures are said to be dangerous. I'll take my chances. I apologize for not being able to help you further, but feel free to look for information in my library. You may find some answers there. And do not hesitate to ask if you have any more specific questions I may be able to help with. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. How fare you today, bookkeeper? Very well, King. Let me do some... Be my... 
These books contain information on religion and philosophy, some of Alexander's favorite topics that he used to bring up again and again at the dinner table. Graham sees one book called Amazing Myths that catches his attention. Graham takes the book and reads through it. He finds an interesting story. These books contain fairy tales, Rosella's favorites, or at least they were when she was a little girl, even though she always seemed to ask the same questions. Why does the princess always have to be waiting in the tower for the prince to come rescue her? Why can't she just find the way out and battle the dragon herself? <sighs> Brave little Rosella, on her way to the altar and the handsome prince she herself had personally rescued, when that fiend stole the spark from her eyes. Graham takes the book and reads through it. He finds an interesting story. Books on Botany. Valenice would have been digging through this shelf as she is always researching new ways to care for her plants. Graham chooses a book called The Power of Nightshade. The books on this shelf are on marine life. Graham wishes he had more time to sit down and read through all these books. One of them catches Graham's attention, however, entitled Folklore of the Sea. Maybe there's time for just a quick tale after all. Graham takes the book, Folklore of the Sea, and reads through it. This isn't the crown's coat of arms. It must have been a gift, or maybe it holds some significance to the store's owner. So much knowledge held within these walls. Graham wonders how many of these books have been victims of Alexander's ferocious hunger for learning. So much knowledge. Graham wonders how many...
magic carpets, eh? I generally don't trust magic carpets, but these may be useful. And some of these do look like there's some magic in them yet. Not even in Daventry do people look so alive and strong-willed after such a tragedy. How do you do today, sir? Oh, just fine. These eyes have seen many a day darker than yesterday, but still, I could be better. What sort of maps do you carry? I have maps of the individual islands, as well as a few rarer ones of supposed phantom islands. Those are more like collector items than navigational tools. And maps of the entire archipelago, as well as a few of the coastlines south of here. Not many people have made it there and back again. I'm sure you've heard of our infamous reefs and currents. I'm sure my son knows a lot more than me. Why are you asking? Are you planning on going anywhere? Maybe. Graham wonders if the Isles get enough visitors to support a life as a map seller. I'd like to buy a map, please. Is this real gold? Yes. Will you accept it? Of course I will. But tell me, what region do you want a map of? I'll take a map of the Green Isles. Ah, a foreigner. A long while since I've seen one around here. Traveling is probably not such a good idea now, with the possibility of another storm like that one last night ripping through here. It might rip their islands right out of the sea. Thank you for your concern, but I'll take my chances. All right, but I should probably tell you that something strange has been happening to my maps lately, though. What's been happening? At first, I thought it was my failing eyes. Then I remembered that my eyes hadn't started failing yet, and what I was seeing had to be real. It's too strange for a fellow like me to take, friend. Too strange. What's strange? One of the maps I have on display is used. It has a lot of small figures and notes scribbled on it. And those things are starting to fade, but fast. And I mean fast! One of them faded and vanished in a half hour at the very most. And not only that, but the older ones that were already faded to begin with are starting to look fresher. Like they might have on the day that they were drawn. Have you noticed this on any of your other maps? Of course I did. As soon as I noticed this, I looked and sure enough, the same thing was happening to my other maps. The newer ones seem the most affected too. A lot of the local maps have entire landmarks missing, even entire islands. I don't know what's going on. Could it be the end of the universe? Fortunately, some of the older maps are still quite intact. I'll give you one of the older ones that I have, since you've given me such a hefty sum here. Thank you. I hope I can find out what's making your maps fade before they're all just sheets of parchment. You just try to stay alive. It's not a good day to die. A small cart with a colorfully lettered sign above it saying candy stands by the fountain. What kind of candies are you selling there, merchant? Well, I've got sugared dates, crystallized ginger, saltwater taffy, honey drops. You know, the usual. Oh! You're not from around here, are you, sir? No, but hearing what you're selling sure makes me wish I was. <laughs> well, let me know if you want to buy anything. How much will this coin buy me, peddler? Oh, this isn't gold, is it? Yes, it's gold. Why, is there something wrong with it? No, no, nothing at all. It's just... 
I never thought I'd be holding this much money in my hands at one time. I'll think nothing of it. How much will one gold coin buy me, though? Probably all the saltwater taffy the water around these islands can yield. But that is, of course, much more than what I have in stock. The second largest amount I can give you might put me out of business. I doubt that, merchant. How about one of everything you have? Will that do? Oh, yes, yes, I can give you that, sir. But I don't know if I have changed for such a large sum. It's all right, friend. Keep it. You'd make better use of it than I could. Oh, bless you, sir. One moment, please. Here you are, sir. Good day, and thank you again. Ah, refreshing. This old merchant had better have a good reason for being in a trade as odd as that. Ah, tell me, merchant. Huh? Well, what was that? Oh, do you wish to trade me an old lamp for a fine new one? No, sorry, I was just wondering. Your trade relies on the hope of you someday finding a genie or something in one of those lamps, right? Why? Yes, you are a well-traveled man, sir. Thank you. And have you ever actually found a genie in one of these old lamps you've received? Uh, well, no. And how long have you been in this trade? Ah, hmm. Uh, quite a while last time I looked. And you have no intentions of retiring in the near future? What? Retire? And miss out on the fortune of a lifetime? Never! I must say you are determined. Good luck, I suppose. A spider's web decorates most of the left section of the counter. It appears to be occupied. A large black spider is clinging to the web. For some reason, Graham is certain it's a she. And the way she's moving her leg. Is she giving him the come hither? Oh my. Woo. A luscious morsel all for me. That's what you get for fooling around with other women, Graham.
Oh my. Woo! Uh, <sighs> That's what you get to. Oh my, a luscious morsel all for me. Hey, this is a fake arm. What are you trying to pull here, mister? A lethal liquid. Check. Ah, hello, Miss... Widow, is it? Call me Blackie, Sugar Pie. How may I help you? There is very little that I can't... do... for you. I'm sorry to disappoint you, ma'am, but I know about your reputation. My son Warren, uh, told me about you. But besides that, I'm married and have been for more than 20 years. Oh, curses! I, I mean, that doesn't mean we can't have a cozy little conversation, does it? I don't see your wife anywhere around here. Besides, 20 years of being chained to your spouse deserves some kind of... Reward, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm quite content with Valenice. Well, let me know if you have a change of heart, all right? I'll be waiting. Any good news today? Well, good news just walked in the door in the form of you, stranger. But otherwise, nothing particularly cheerful, I'm afraid. That luscious Alexander and that succulent, pretty little sister of his, I mean, are still asleep, so the newsbirds say, and things seem to be doing badly. I know that. But things may be looking up for me, at least, since you've shown up. I don't want to get tangled up in any of your schemes, Miss Widow. Blackie, sugar pie. Blackie. Aside from the wedding events, is there anything else? There have been reports of strange occurrences, not only from local reporters, but birds from other nearby lands. Serenia, mostly. And some from very far away. Daventry, even. What sorts of reports? Oh, you are a clever rhyme master. But, since you asked, in some of the forests of Serenia, the locals have observed that some of the trees that have lost their leaves are starting to regain them, and the leaves are beginning to phase from brown to green. Goodness. And here, there have been many more strange occurrences, even here, among the members of the newsletter staff. Some notes that the scribes write start to fade if they are left alone for very long. It's getting harder and harder to get anything done around here. Strange. Have you heard any news about what caused yesterday's calamity? Indeed. The stranger has been seen in various places, always wearing that sexy black cloak of his. Do you know what he's been doing? The man has a fixation with a certain artifact. Pandora's box. Do you know where this man can be found? My, my, aren't we full of questions? Maybe you and I could go around in a lovely walk and I could devour and relate you the story of the mysterious man. Thank you for the kindness, but I'm in a hurry. Mm -hmm. The most interesting meals. Men, 
I mean, are always rushing everything. <laughs> but no, my dear, nobody knows about the strange man's whereabouts. My sisters are working hard at it, but it just seems he totally vanishes after making his appearance. Quite a hard fish to eat. Catch! Have you had any reports on the cause of these strange occurrences? It's all a mystery. Maybe you could decipher it with my help. If you'd only let me nibble, uh, whisper it in your ear, of course. Don't make me wait for tomorrow's edition of the newspaper. These victims, men, I mean, of today have lost their sense of humor. Maybe because you've eaten them all. I overwhelmed them all, I mean. <laughs> Very funny, sugar pie. No. Nobody knows the cause of these events. Some diced people, wise people, I mean, from the city of Estratos, have gathered in secret meetings, but we still need to hear a verdict. The city of Estratos? <laughs> you need to get out there, sweet meat. I mean, sweetheart. I'm talking about the great city of time, Estratos. Hmm. What can you tell me about voodoo? Oh my. This is not New Orleans, and you are not a certain womanizer failure as a writer, loser to be shadow hunter kind of werewolf graces gone bad hair act broke dude now owns a castle Mr. Knight, Graham. Which reminds me, where is Gabriel Knight 4? I'd better be leaving. Oh, all right. But promise me you'll be back. Tall, handsome, and tasty. Maybe. Graham glances at the inn and smiles, remembering how he used to frequent the prattling pony back in his youth, when he was eager for his first adventure. Then he decided to become a knight and... Hey, that was a long time ago. This one is called Crown Pint, and it seems very crowded because of the celebration, of course. It seems that everyone wanted to get as close to the castle as they could. Graham glances at the inn and smiles, remembering how he used to frequent the prattling pony back in his youth, when he was eager for his first adventure. Then he decided to become a knight. Hey, this Wherever Graham looks, there is so much activity. The village is surely busy with so many visitors that came for the wedding. It's heartening to see the townsfolk getting back into their daily routines in spite of everything. A good adventurer should always carry a map when he can. This is a very good one, even if it can't transport him to the isles themselves like the map Alexander once used in these lands. Here's the map. Perfect. Here you have it. But remember... I'll be careful.
right to go on a break when there are such terrible things about. Oui, oui, je le sais. On devrait faire... King Gra Shamir. I'm glad you're here. I've been hoping to speak with you privately. It's about the stranger. Do you have any information about the stranger? As a matter of fact, I do. A while ago, Alexander learned that Alhazred was communicating with a group of people. I heard the name Black Cloak Society mentioned often by him when he was my master. Who were these people? There were at least six or seven. Alexander mentioned your family had crossed paths with them at some point or another. Why didn't you mention this last night? I didn't want to alarm anybody. I wanted to make sure that my information was accurate. Black Cloak Society. Do you think it's related to the cloaked man? I'm positive. I looked again at some of the letters Alexander once found in Alhazred's room, and they confirm it. Here, look at these. The first is dated from a few years ago, but the second one arrived in Alhazred's magical letterbox just after he was captured. Alexander had hoped to use it to learn more, but the magical letterbox stopped working shortly after that. To the brothers and sisters of the Black Cloak Society, I am sure you all have questions about it's this mysterious, mysterious voice speaking to you in dreams, as I once had. Fear it not, friends. It is the voice of our mighty leader, who is now preparing to walk among us once more. The time is drawing near. The prison that holds him is weakening, and it is now that we must join our forces and tip fate in our favor for the triumphant return of the Black Cloak Society to its former glory. We must not lower our guard, however. All signs seem to point to the return of the Silver Cloaks as well. But years ago, we made every effort and sacrifice required of us to set in motion events that will lead to our victory. Even now, I have in my grasp one of the prophesied children. But we do not yet have everything we need. Now more than ever, we must find the location of the box. Sister Lelote is sparing no efforts to find its rumored location in Tamir. To the return of the Black Cloak Society, may you all be in shadows. Mananan. Brother Alhazred, I received your letter that Prince Alexander of Daventry has journeyed to your little island kingdom, and I write to you in haste. Though he may be a threat to your plans, you must not kill the boy. He is essential to our master's plan and the return to glory of the Black Cloak Society. Be wary. He is an intelligent young man and versed in magic. He is the same slave Gwydion who escaped Mananan years ago by turning one of his own spells upon him. To underestimate him would be foolish, and you must exercise caution and restraint in this situation, Alhazred. Replied acknowledgement as soon as you can. May you be in shadows, Agatha. Brother Alhazred. This is grave news, Agatha. That's the vile witch who kidnapped Valenice and locked her in a tower in Kalima. We never knew what happened to her. And Mananan, that's the blackguard who stole Alexander when he was just an infant. He's the reason why Valenice and I spent so many sleepless nights worrying about our son. Do you think he was the one at the wedding? I don't see how he could be. The last I knew of him, he was stuck in the form of a cat as the result of a spell Alexander had cast on him. Do you know who this leader he speaks of might be? I don't, but Alexander has been investigating this for some time. There is one name I can't recall, and I've been looking for this letter all over the place. 
It was received by Alhazred during the time I was under his command. I will look through Alexander's notes and see what I can make of it, Your Highness. Perhaps the answers are in front of us yet. Thank you. And Shamir? Yes? Do not mention any of this to anyone, especially not to my wife. This letter from Hagatha would only upset her, as would the one from Mananan. Until we know more, I don't wish to burden her or the rest of my family further. My lips are sealed, sire. So, what is this Black Cloak Society? A thousand years ago, there existed a dark cult of the worst and most evil wizards in the world. A despicable force that grew stronger with each passing year. At first, they only caused minor problems, but they steadily became a stronger force and a menace to all the known lands. And they still exist to this day? I believe Alexander mentioned them once or twice now that I think of it, but he never told me much about it. What's more interesting is how they formed and where they drew their name from. You saw how in the letter he mentions the Silver Cloaks? They were another society that was even more secretive. There is almost no mention of them at all in any of the records I've been able to find. I didn't make the connection until I came across an ancient tome in a library far from here. The Silver Cloak Society was formed by some of the wisest and most noble wizards, the perfect antithesis to the Black Cloaks. But who exactly were these Silver Cloaks? I'm not completely sure, but I do know they were masters of a lost form of magic that controls dreams. Like the spell the Archdruid told me about. Not exactly. The Silver Cloaks could not only control dreams, but they could shape them into whatever they wished. They could drag people into the dream world and even make dreams appear around us in the waking world. The tome implied the most powerful of them could even form reality from dreams themselves. Making dreams come true? And real? Is that even possible? I've heard of myths and legends that speak of magic that deals with dreams, but even to us genies, it's a mystery. And we've been around for more years than you can count. The spell you carry now is one I've never seen before. With almost no records of the Silver Cloaks existing at all, it's clear they were very secretive, but also that they were a force of good. So they were essentially two societies at war? It runs deeper than that. But yes, there was a war between them. What happened at the end of the war? In due time, sire. First go back to the beginning. There was a society of dark wizards that wanted nothing more than power. It turned some of them into dark beasts, inhuman walking shadows. With this power, they ravaged the lands, killed innocents, brought suffering everywhere they went. That was the beginning of the war, and by all accounts, it was truly devastating. But the Silver Cloaks were wise and they crafted a weapon that trapped the shadows and sealed them away forever. And so they defeated them? I'm not sure. That's where the trail runs cold. There are no records of the war, the Silver Cloaks or the Black Cloaks after that. It's as if they all just vanished. Something must have happened, but I don't know what. I'm not sure anyone does. This is an interesting story, but it doesn't explain why that stranger or this Black Cloak Society would want to curse my children. It has everything to do with them, sire. The artifact the Silver Cloaks used to defeat the Dark Wizard the first time around was called Pandora's Box. Pandora's Box? Rosella found it in Tamir. The box mentioned in the letter, it is the one and the same. Exactly. They must be seeking Pandora's Box once again. But why? What exactly did this artifact do? I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but somehow they did use it to trap the shadows inside. And there are no records that say what happened to it after it was used. Yet somehow it ended up in Tamir, and Rosella found it there. Lalote needed her help to do so. But Rosella stopped her before she could give it to the others, and then locked the box up again. If what you say is true, then this box, it can never be opened again. I shudder to think what the consequences of such an action would be. You must stop this man from finding it. First I must save my children, then I'll deal with that. I get the feeling that in order to accomplish the first, you may find you'll have to do the latter as well. That may be the case. 
Thank you. And again, let's keep this between us until we know more. This is good information, but without anything more current, I don't know that we can use any of it. A very strange storm took over the aisles last night. I know. We felt it here, too. It was unnatural. Something happened last night, something big, and I don't know what it was. Let me know if you find the cause. I shall, sire. I should get back to my quest. Good luck, sire. I will continue researching. Poor Edgar. The prince surely came here after everyone went to sleep and did nothing but stare at the altar, the gardens, the red carpet, trying to recover any of the happy moments before everything fell apart. Knowing the prince, Graham has no doubt Edgar has been blaming himself for letting that cloaked man steal Rosella out of his embrace. How long the prince tormented himself so before finally succumbing to exhaustion Graham can only guess. Oh, Edgar, are you awake? What? what? Who? Oh, it's you, King Graham. D did you make it back all right? The sun is up already. What time is it? Mid-morning. Well, no wonder. I stayed with Rosella until the storm passed. Then I came here. Wandering in the memories of what could have been is only going to make things worse for you. I can't help it. Besides, it's not going to make it any easier if I'm somewhere else. Rosella is still under that spell, no matter where I am. It's not where you physically are, but where your heart is that matters. You have to believe. I'm trying. Son, I know I already asked you this, but you didn't get to see the stranger's face? I... I gazed at it, the little I could see under that hood. But my eyes were locked up in his eyes. Red, scary eyes. Just thinking of those eyes sent shivers down my spine. Did he look human? I was about to say that. No, not at all. But then again, I just couldn't tell. It was evil, that's all I know. What do you think of the Green Isles? It's different. Different from any land I've ever seen before. Different from Temir, different from Eldritch, different from Etheria. But I think I love it. You're not alone there. It's just that, what's happened here? Why? Why did this have to happen? Such a beautiful day. Ruined entirely. I've been trying to answer that question myself, but I'm most certain that things always happen for a reason. What the reason is, we have yet to see. I don't see any worthy reasons for this to happen. Sometimes we can't see them. Not right away. There are acting forces greater than us, after all. The fates can be mysterious. Couldn't this just be explained by pure evil? Perhaps. But what seems evil at first often leads to something good, if we are determined enough to change it. It's hard for me to see it that way. But you do have more experiences than I do. I must tell you I had my doubts about you and Rosella. Why? Don't get me wrong, but Rosella is such an adventurous young lady, and you seem more moderate than she. <laughs> we always meet at a middle point. I must say, though, that most of the times, I find myself dragged into her crazy ideas. Do you remember the celebrations following the restoration of the Mask of Eternity? Yes, you weren't able to go because... It was you in that disguise, wasn't it? I thought it was a little too crazy at the time. But that's Rosella. She formulated that whole plan of me going to the celebration in disguise so as not to attract attention to us. Or, that's what she said. I just think she did it for the sake of excitement. It's not that I'm blaming her or something, and it seemed to work, too. 
No one seemed to even glance at me. You don't know what a relief it was not to be gawked at like some expensive painting, or to be asked questions about when Rosella and I were going to be married. It all seems a little silly to me now, but boy, she is so determined. She was always pulling me into these little plots of hers. That sounds like a perilous life you're looking forward to. Well, maybe I'm not looking to stick my head in a thorn bush. But I do want Rosella to be my... Uh, well, my wife. Let me tell you something, my child. Rosella is probably the bravest young woman I have ever seen. And I'm not telling you because she's my daughter. Why, most of the time, I wish she was just a regular girl. Well, that's everything she's not. She has her own way of loving. And if you got her to settle her head down and get married, she must love you incredibly. I think she does. I'm sure she does. What do the people of your homeland think of your marriage to Rosella? There were a lot of different reactions when my father made the announcement. Some of the fairies laughed, some cheered, some shouted at me. Why would they do that? Well, you have to keep in mind that I'm not human. I'm a fairy that looks human, like my Aunt Melicia. And a fairy marrying a human may seem ridiculous to some of the citizens of Etheria. It's not how everyone else feels about what you choose, but what your heart tells you, lad. That's all that matters. It took me a while to realize that, but my love for Rosella made me see it that way. My family is possibly closer to humanity than most of the supernatural beings. We think that humans and fairies couldn't survive without each other. That seems like a perfectly good reason to marry Rosella to me. Besides, even before I knew who I really, um, was, I knew that I loved her. That's how I've always felt about my Valenice. <laughs> I loved her the moment I saw her. Keep your hopes up, Edgar, and soon you and Rosella will be together again as it should be. Thank you for saying that, Your Majesty. I can only hope that she will be well again soon. Edgar, you met the same fate as my son. You were taken from your family when you were an infant and raised by someone who wasn't your mother. How did it feel? Uh, why don't you ask your son? It's not that I couldn't tell you, but... Because Alexander, he doesn't talk much about it. I don't know if I should say this, but it's funny that you mentioned that. Why? I don't know. I won't let him know. Well, I guess it wouldn't do any harm. A couple of days ago, it was late at night, and Rosella and Casima were busy with the wedding dress and all that. So I walked to the beach, and Alexander was there, swimming in the sea. He didn't have his shirt on, and I saw these... scars on his back. Scars? Heavens. Did he notice you there? <sighs> he did. I didn't know what to say. It was very awkward for both of us. I was about to leave, but he asked me to stay. When I said it was funny you asked me that question, it was because he asked me the same. He then went on to ask me if I had recovered from my own kidnapping. What was your answer? Your Majesty, I didn't suffer as much as your son did. Lalote did love me, in her own twisted way. She did protect me. I wasn't treated as a slave, but as her son. Didn't you ever feel she wasn't your true mother? It was hard to tell. I guess sometimes I did, but I got used to it. That was something Alexander told me he never did. He somehow knew he had a family out there. He could never bear the thought of never seeing them. You. Maybe that's why he escaped while you stayed. In my case, it was Rosella who made me see. Who gave me the strength to do something about it. But for Alex, it was another story. Has Alexander talked to you more about it since that night? No, I never expected him to say anything the first time either. Did you mention any of this to Rosella? No, I didn't want to weigh Rosella down with these stories. I don't think she's aware of this. She's very proud of him. She says she always knew he was alive, and she'd dream about meeting him. And over the years, she created this image of him in her mind. I'm happy to know that they get along so well. Rosella insists that he should talk more. And sometimes she wishes he would tell her more about his past. But her love for him is pure. She even told me once that one of the reasons she rejected me the first time we met in Tamir 
was because she couldn't bear the feeling that she was going to be separated so soon from her brother, after having just met him. I know how true that is. After she came back from Tamir, they would spend all their time together, day and night. Rosella was eager to show Alexander every hidden corner of Daventry, even when Alexander would sometimes prefer to stay alone reading, or be in the company of his mother. Rosella says he's very close to the Queen. Yes. While Rosella and I are much alike, Alexander really enjoys the company of his mother, and to Valenis this is a treasure, especially after believing him dead for so many years. Do you think this family... And excuse me for being so bold of calling you my family. You are one of us, my child. Do you think we'll ever find happiness? There's a paradox to that. You couldn't know what happiness is if you don't live through the tougher times like this. They make you stronger, and they make you value those moments of happiness with all your heart. That is one thing I've learned already. But sometimes it seems as though there are more tough times than good. And we've all had enough of those. I'd better be off now. Farewell, Your Highness. Tell me if there is anything at all I can do to help Rosella. I will. Someone must have forgotten this water bottle here. The impressive and large suit of armor gives an imposing presence of guarding the hallway. It's unfortunate it's only an empty suit of armor and nothing more, or perhaps it may have been of help the day before. Still, Graham has to admire the metalwork done here and wonders what the armor was once used for, as the guard dogs who currently protect the castle do not wear anything quite like this. This object is not responding. There is no reply. What's this? It looks like Cosima's necklace. She must have had it with her last night and dropped it here. Cosima's parents, Alaria and Calafim. Graham unfortunately did not have the chance to meet with them on this occasion. The Queen was called away to visit a close childhood friend who had recently become very ill and could not attend the wedding. Cosima expressed her mother's profound apologies and invited the Daventry family to visit another time when Alaria would not be away and so beset with worry. What a lovely portrait of Alexander and Cosima. The painter must have been extra kind with Alexander because there are no signs of the slight unease that usually haunts his eyes. Instead, he looks as happy and as handsome as ever. Graham wishes his son were so carefree more often. I know, I know, but... 
If I had just one minute with that creep, I'd tell you he'd be sorry then. Oui, désolé que tu n'es pas endormi à cause de ton charpent. Maintenant, ferme ta porte. Travaille. I'll trade you this candy for your fishing pole. Really? Wow! Everyone says strangers tried to poison you with candy. But you look like nice, sir. Here is my pole! Thanks, mister! Good day, Hassan. Good day indeed. Ready to sail? Salty sea air, like a bracing slap in the face from a lover. Cosima once told me this necklace was a gift from her grandmother when she was a child. She said she kept it with her to remember how her grandmother always told her everything would be all right when she was sad or upset. This sturdy fishing pole reminds Graham of fishing trips he took in his youth with his own father a lifetime ago. There's no place I'd rather be than on the open sea. Good friends, good company. A good quest. What are you fishing for, Graham? Sea nymphs? I caught a sea nymph once. Many years ago. I used a rusty barnacle as some bait. Yep. True story. Shipwrecked. It worked. How oh, that hurt. Oh, look! A visitor has brought us a gift. Let me see it. Hey, wait a moment, sisters! Look at this human who has given us this treasure. My word, isn't he the one who is the father of those two unfortunate children? Yes, I am, my ladies. You know about Alexander and Rosella? Why, of course. We know everything that goes on in the Isles. And we have been intent on meeting you ever since we got word of your children's mysterious ailments. Why? Because we want to help you, Father of the King of the Green Isles. We are not ones to stand idly by while sorrow rules the land. We know that you have to awaken your children. The sooner, the better. And yes, we know of the spell that you are trying to find the ingredients for too, King Graham. Is there anything you don't know? Not that we know of. We may be able to help you in your quest to find the ingredients. I'm looking for a magic bag. Only we know where it is. And where is that? Why, we have it, of course. May I have it? Yes. Wait right where you are, King Graham. We'll be back shortly. Why, I remember one time I heard a story of a sea nymph 
she drank this little bit of a potion that gave her four mouths. And let me tell you something, nothing like a sea nymph with four mouths. That's all right, that's all right. Uh, you've made your point, Hassan. <laughs> ah, good day to you, ladies. Here you are, the magic bag for ancient spells. And just because we want to help you, we'll also give you another treasure we guard. The Cape of Invisibility, which can hide you from probing eyes. Well, thank you very much, fair sea nymphs. Oh, it's nothing to us, since you gave us this beautiful trinket to admire. I'm sorry, but I borrowed that gem from someone who values it very deeply, and she would be very hurt if I didn't return it to her. Oh, but it is so charming! Please, sir, let us keep this pretty thing. I'm afraid that the owner of that pretty thing is Queen Kasima. You wouldn't want to be the cause of the Queen's misery, would you, my ladies? Oh, we didn't realize that this lovely item... It's true, you have my word. Of course it is. We know everything, remember? What is your gift to us, then? Look, sisters, it shines. Thank you. Oh, did you see the tail on that one? Ah, the ocean. Like looking into the abyss and it never looking back at you. A magical bag. Check. The solid rocks seem almost out of place in the otherwise empty waters around the Green Isles. What would you do with it? The first mate looks sour and in a very untalkative mood. Ready to sail? What? By the three magic treasures? Aha! And who might you be, little fellow? <coughs> Slow down, my fantastic friend. <coughs> what is it that you say? I can't decipher your tongue. <coughs> the sea? <coughs> Over the sea? I understand. You are lost and you want to go home. I'm sorry, I wish I could help you go home, but I'm on a critical mission. All right, all right, don't cry. You can come along. I'll do my best to bring you home. Jump in, my new companion. The guards ignore Graham in every way possible, and even when he knows they deserve the same treatment, the king's manners are too sophisticated to not acknowledge their presence and importance of duty. 
Graham doesn't want to waste his time, they will only continue to ignore him. Ready to sail? The large oysters cozily sleep in the warm sun. Oyster beds? How clever. Aye, sire, most oyster beds are cute, but these oysters are far from cute. They're far from normal. If it wasn't for the funny-looking oysters, Graham would never suspect anything odd about this isle. However, having heard Alexander's stories, he knows strange events await him. The large oysters cozily sleep in the oyster bed. I, I do not wish to wake them up. Why? They look so cute when they're sleeping. Why? They it won't fit in Graham's pockets. Strange, I know. A crying cabbage. Graham actually prefers his coleslaw quiet. Balanice loves growing tomatoes when she's not taking care of her roses back in Daventry. Maybe Graham could take the seeds of one of these and his wife would have someone to talk to while growing her plants. On the other hand, Balanice seems to enjoy having that time to spend on her own in the gardens. Graham's always thought it must be awfully lonely personally. What in the name of Daventry is this? Ah, the beloved Magnet. Isn't he a cute little fellow? These snapping draconic flowers look very fierce. True to its name, the iceberg lettuce is frigid to the touch. This would give the dish cold salad a very literal meaning. It's not nice to stare. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Eek! Leave, Leave us alone. alone! The poor thing looks dead. Ooh, too cold. Graham doesn't want to disturb them. All right, I'm backing off.
The green vines look fragile, but they cling to the wall with fierce determination. What's that behind them? Try as he might, Graham cannot get his hand out of the hole. Without food and water, he perishes in the hot sun. Come on, Graham. How long have you been at this? You should know by now that sticking your hand into a mysterious hole isn't going to end well. Good idea. Now, where do you want to lead him to? The speckled gates are locked tight against intruders. This is without a doubt the craziest looking key Graham has ever seen in his life. It, it almost looks like someone dropped a boulder on top of key and some other wacky creature to make it. And considering where he found it, Graham's not entirely certain that might not be the case. Graham would rather not be carrying anything touched by that evil stranger who cursed his children, but this thick black cloak is his only clue. Hopefully, it will help him discover the villain's identity. Alexander gave his father some currency of the Kingdom of the Green Isles. The Green Isles coins still bear the profile of King Caliphim, Cassima's father. A good adventurer should this sturdy fishing pole room. Graham handles the fake arm with care. He doesn't want to be poisoned accidentally. Ah, the wonders of technology. Whoever invented this spraying mechanism must have been a genius. The bottle is filled with seawater. There's a note on a tag inside the cloak. Only one use per wearer. Graham had better save this for when he really needs it. And Graham thought he was never going to find the magic bag he needed. Graham finds it very odd to have found the strange hole-in-the-wall companion Alexander talked so much about. What I find odd is Alexander talking that much about anything. Even when he was a baby, he would almost never cry out or scream at all. 
there he goes on another one of his long-winded trips down memory lane. Let's just skip this one, shall we? Are you done now? Pardon? Oh, nothing. Back to adventuring, Graham. What are you doing here? Chessboard land is no place for humans. That's right. Only chess pieces are allowed. Don't even think of trying to enter. Please, Sir Knights, I'm King Graham of Daventry. I'm on a very important mission to revive my son, King Alexander, and his sister, Princess Rosella. I may find helpful ingredients in your land. Your quests are of no importance to us. That's right. They are of no importance to us. I must insist. I don't care how important you say the matter is. We have strict orders from the Red and White Queens. They'll have our heads if we allow any trespassers inside. That's right. They will cut off our heads in a guillotine. How tyrannical. And besides, the chess match is over now. Everybody wants some peace, especially after the events of those two queens. That's right. Especially with those events simply disrupting. Who won the match? Nobody. That's right. Nobody did. The Queens, as usual, got mixed in an endless discussion of who cheated who. And in the middle of the match, the White King stood up and he said, I've had it. That's right. I've had it, he said, and left. The King left? Correct. Never to come back again. That's right. And the match was unfinished. That's... some story. Well, now that you know, please leave. That's right. Leave now. All right. Place head here. Gee, how thoughtful of them. For some reason, Graham doesn't think following the instructions on the sign would be a good idea. Uh, just because it says head, that doesn't mean it won't take a hand instead. No touching the guillotine, Graham. Uh, just because... No touching the... Tomorrow? Do they have daily beheadings here? Is it some kind of a sport to them? Do they hand out applications? Do they pay well? Can I join? Uh, oh. Uh, well, never mind. The wacky towers and wobbly columns of the Castle of Chessboard Land stands out impressively over the landscape that, thus far, has been largely featureless. No trees, no grass, nothing at all but the chessboard pattern everywhere. But then, Graham has long heard and now knows firsthand that the Isle of Wonder is the type of place where one must very much expect the unexpected.
They sacrifice themselves. Do I know you? The Silver Cloaks. They were twelve at the end. And one by one they sacrificed themselves in order to put an end to the war. It was the only way. They sealed their very souls in the Zadaya Stone to contain the power of the Black Cloaks. They paid the ultimate price, and one by one they became each one of the signs that sealed it. Who are you, and what do you know about the Silver Cloak Society? And what's a Zodaya Stone? The Silver Cloaks were a very noble order, led by Leo the Noble, the wisest and bravest of them all. They became one with the Zodaya Stone to imprison the man you seek. Without him, without his power, the rest of the Black Cloaks crumbled, vanished. Some say he controlled them like puppets. His armies marched to the song of his evil chant. He was a very powerful man. He whose name I dare not speak. The one you now face. Is this the man who did this to Alexander and Rosella? What does he want from my children? He is back. After a thousand years, the seals have begun to lose their power, and now he can exit his prison. Yet not completely. The key to his freedom lies deep within the memory of your children. But it is not only your children he is after. What do you mean? Speak clearly. Queen Valenice, too, plays a role. Your whole family is being called by the echoes of the prophecy to play a part in the final chapter of this story. None of this makes any sense. What are you talking about? Who are you? This is all happening because humans once defied the fates. Beware that you do not make the same mistake. Stop speaking in riddles and tell me all that you know. Why my family? What do we have to do with all this? You are about to learn a great deal about yourself, King Graham. You are tied to this man in ways you cannot begin to imagine. And it is destined to be that the time shall come for you to make a choice. Will you choose darkness or light? Choose? I don't even know what we're talking about. We'll meet again. Hey, where did you go? Where did he go? Rats. A prophecy? The silver cloaks? The Zodiac Stone? What is this nonsense? The cupboard to the side of the chessboard has doors made of gleaming clear glass, showing off the shelves within. One shelf holds a very curious-looking cup. If Graham wants to open the cupboard, he's going to need a key. You're going to help me out, buddy, and then I'll set you free. Thank you. Be well. Valenice, what could this mean? An animated vessel, check. How did you enter the lands? 
that's what. How did you do it? We had orders not to let anyone enter. Now we are in trouble. It's all your fault. That's right. It's all my... Hey, no. That's not right. It is. Is not. 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 Ready to sail? Any words of advice on traveling the Isle of Wonders? I've heard it's very far from normal. It's a funny place, I. Be careful not to anger the chessboard queens, or you may end up in their guillotine. I narrowly avoided it myself once, and thanks to that, I can't go any further than this dock on the island itself. My goodness. What did you do? Ah... Uh, well, let's just say I had two gold earrings, sire, and not likely to get the second one back anytime soon. I see. Ready to sail? Hello, Gideon. <gasps> Mananin. But that's... that's impossible. It, it can't. This is a dream. This is all a dream. I've been looking for you for a long time, Gideon. My name is Alexander. You disappointed me. Why did you run away? You were like a son to me. A son? I was your slave! You took me from my family and stole the life that belonged to me! I gave you an education and you would have grown to take my place. Your place? Six feet underground? Yes, I know what you did to the other boys when they turned 18. You murderer. You were going to do the same to me had I not escaped. Again, you disappoint me. I had such plans for you. You are not real. None of this is real. Oh, but I am quite real, my boy. As real as this place is. Look around you. This place exists because of you. I walk these lands because of your power. Such an amazing power inside your mind and your sisters. You truly are the children of prophecy, my son. Don't you dare call me that! Your disobedience shall be punished. No. No! No! What was that? Alexander. And Mananan, this doesn't make any sense. Greetings, your majesty. You'd better get inside, quickly. Inside? Why? It's... well, I'd better not say it where someone might be listening. Captain Saladin would be a better person to ask, anyhow.
Your Highness, King Graham, you must come with me immediately. What's wrong? Sire, it's your wife. Valnice? What's happening? Is she alright? We don't know, Sire. She's... Is she in her room? Yes, Sire. Where have you been, Sire? The whole castle has been worried for your safety since the storm last evening. Did you find a cure? Valanice? Valanice? <gasps> Valanice! No! What are you doing, Valanice? <gasps> it's alright, Valanice. It's alright. <laughs> Don't lose yourself over this. It will all be fine. Don't worry, we'll all get through this. You know we will. Alexander and Rosella are going to recover from this. I found a way to help them, and I will save them. I don't know how things can get much worse than this. 